Now let's take a look at some of the mathematics behind VSB amplitude modulation. So the first step is to do our classic DSB modulation. So we take our message, we multiply it by that carrier cosine. Then we have a DSB signal, and we've seen this quite a few times. It looks like this, and we have our message shifted out to plus or minus FC, just like we've seen before. Next, we need to apply a filter to get that VSB signal. Now recall, right, if we have our DSB signal like this, right, it has a bandwidth of 2B, and we're going to need to apply a filter so that we get something kind of like a single sideband, right? We're going to cross out most of this lower sideband. We're going to be left with our upper sideband here. And so our filter HI is some type of filter that takes our DSB signal, filters it, and leaves us with this vestigial sideband signal. So it's our message that's been shifted, and then it's been shaped by a filter HI. And this HI filter is a band pass filter that is centered uh, at this upper sideband. Now to demodulate this, we're going to need to somehow take this signal, this VSB signal, and we're going to need to move it back down to our baseband signal. And we do that by taking the VSB signal and, and applying a coherent cosine wave to it, just like we've seen before. So we take our VSB signal, apply this coherent cosine wave, and this shifts the VSB by plus or minus FC. So this is going to give us some baseband uh, signals that we can use to recover our original message. However, there's still that problem of the fact that this filter uh, did something to the message, right? It did something to the message that may have changed it a bit. And so we're going to have to apply a second filter to reshape our VSB signal so that our message can be recovered properly and without distortion. So our, mes our final message is going to be this signal E multiplied by the output filter. So from a system perspective, we first have this part of the system, which basically modulates our message, applies a bandpass filter, and passes it through a channel as the VSB signal. Then in this stage, we have the demodulation begins. We take the VSB signal and apply a coherent demodulation cosine. This gives us an ET signal that looks like this. It's a vestigial sideband signal that's been moved by plus or minus FC, so it now has baseband components again. The final step is going to be to take that E signal and apply the second part of the filter which reshapes E, reshapes our VSB baseband components, so that the message can be recovered without error. So these filters HI and HO work together to shape that signal, and they're complementary. So that complementary aspect means that the HI filter, when it's shifted, so just like we shifted our VSB signal back at plus or minus, FC. When we shift our HI signal at plus or minus FC, this is going to give us some uh, low frequency components or some baseband components. And summing these two components and multiplying by this complementary filter should equal to one. So this is going to be kind of uh, an equalization you could think of it as. So these low pass components that are summed and multiplied by this H out are going to equal to one. And so the form of H out should be this one over the sum of H in shifted to plus FC and H in shifted to minus FC should give us this output filter. And this is going to be a low pass filter. And these are going to be include low pass components. <clears throat> And so this combination gives us a, a complementary filter design where this H out is kind of defined by the H in and they're complementary to each other. So the bit, this H I filter at F is a bandpass filter, but when you apply this plus F C or minus F C, similar to the idea of demodulation, this is going to give us some low pass components. And this is going to go on the bottom denominator of our definition of our output filter. And then our 
our output filter is a low pass filter in the end that's defined it's defined based on its relationship to the input filter which was a band pass filter which was used to shape our DSB signal into the vestigial sideband signal.